damn that that got me in a whole different zone man different space different vibe whoa um that is how you perform a song man you put yourself in the emotions of the story right and you really feel like you're there kind of witnessing this this young lady's life Part 3 of a 4 part series doing a deep dive on the debut album by Bob Dylan called Bob Dylan. I'll be trying to analyse the music and particularly his lyrics. Here we go, hope you guys enjoy. Track 8 or number 1 on side 2 is called Gospel Plough. It's also known with some other names such as Hold On or Keep Your Hand on the Plough. It's a traditional African American spiritual. Like most African American spirituals, Gospel Plough can be defined as a musical poem, not a tribute to any specific poet or composer. And it speaks about the allusions to the plough, makes clear reference to the enslaved conditions of African Americans working in the fields. Let's hear the track. Here we go. This is Dylan's interpretation of the song. Oh, wow. Very different style. There was three links of chain. Every link was Jesus' name. Keep your hand on that plow. Hold on. Mary, Margaret, Luke, and John, all them prophets of the dead gone. Keep your hand on that plow, hold on. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Keep your hand on that plow, hold on. I like how listening to this album is almost like taking a history class because you get to see so many different things. The context of music, uh, where different styles of music originated and then also these are the like writings of like slaves uh, essentially right and the idea of like christianity being used as a way to get through these really really dark times all these prophets so good and gone just like they will be essentially mary mark mary mark luke and john <laughs> Well, I've never been to heaven, but I've been told streets of their line with gold. Keep your hand on that plow, hold on. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Keep your hand on that plow, hold on. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Keep your hand on that plow, hold on. Once again, one of the interesting parts of the musical style is the way that the guitar plays rhythm and the m melody. Like it's it's playing the guitar part, which is obviously melodic, but it also is the actual driving force of the beat it exists like rhythmically too, which I find to be really interesting. Also, this line here had me thinking, oh Lord, keep your hand on that plow, hold on. I don't think they're just talking about holding on to an actual plow. I think it's uh, maybe a metaphor, the idea of like, you gotta keep going, hold on to this life that you have, as difficult as it may be. Interesting track, I don't love it. There's gonna be tracks like this that come up, they're just, they're just not of my time. This is the first time I hear something like this. You know, it's hard to get into, but Again, it's interesting as a music fan to hear these these kind of tracks. Cool, man. I like this bit as well. We said many wore three links of chain. Every link was Jesus' name. Very, very uh, Christian oriented. I think a lot of those, like I think they were called like s spirituals, like uh, slave spirituals in the time. Uh, okay, on to the next track. Baby, let me follow you down. This is another one of these traditional folk songs. I think they're called folk standards that a lot of people covered is actually popularized by Bob Dylan. So here's the little context that I have for the for the track. From blind boy Fowler to Eric Von Schmidt to a young Bobby Zimmerman to an alienated and rebellious rock star playing to a hostile foreign audience. I couldn't quite find who this was related to, alienated rebellious rock star. I guess you guys will let me know. I was thinking it would be probably uh, David Bowie, but it wasn't the case. We follow the bizarre journey of Baby Let Me Follow You Down. First heard this from uh, Rick Von Schmidt. 
He lives in Cambridge. Rick's a blues guitar player. I met him one day in the green pastures of uh, Harvard University. Let me follow you down, baby. Let me follow you down. Well, I do anything in this God Almighty world if you just let me follow you down. Interesting style where he intros the track. Oop! Interesting style in the way that he intros the track, like he's speaking in a live performance. That's what you do, right? In the start of it, you let people know the origin of the track. He just does it on the recording. Again, I think it speaks to the nature of the recording of the track and this raw style of this album. Can I come home with you? Baby, can I come home with you? Yes, I do anything in this guy world if you just let me come home with you baby let me follow you down baby let me follow you down and I do anything in this God of my world if you just let me follow you down. Yes, I do anything in this God of my world if you just let me follow you down. Really beautiful harmonica part on this. I think that was the best aspect of the track. I think it's a style of music that's going to take me a while to get used to. Not every one of these songs is going to click with me. Like folk music has been like that. Uh, the song that has really kind of shone out to me was the fifth track, I believe, or the fourth track, Man of Constant Sorrow, was the one of these folk songs that really I felt like, okay, I get this. I get what they're trying to do here. It was absolutely beautiful. But the kind of simplistic, repetitive nature of the music behind Dylan, I don't know. It might take me a bunch of time to really, really like it and appreciate it because it doesn't always uh, exactly work with me. It looks like there's some additional verses as well that he lays down after 66. But in general, I would say this is one of the weaker songs on the album. Uh, just didn't really speak to me. And again, I think an uh, issue with the fact that this album is very heavy in covers, you don't get to hear... Dylan's perspective is a part of the, I think, uh, kind of a letdown in the album in general. But regardless, we'll get to those tracks eventually, of course. We're going to do the, all, the, all the albums and songs. So let's go on to the next song. The House of the Rising Sun is actually a song that I've checked out beforehand. I checked out the Animals version, which I absolutely loved. It was a song that is inspired or taken from a traditional folk song. Not everyone is or people aren't really sure exactly where it first started it looks like the first collect it was first collected in appalachia in the 1930s but probably has its roots in traditional english folk songs and it tells the tale from the point of view of a young woman who falls into the life of prostitution and is a notorious brothel called the rising sun i think in new orleans and it's kind of like a parable about uh, which urges siblings or parents and children to avoid the same fate so this is bob dylan's version of the track let's check it out Oh, I know those chords very well. There is a house down in New Orleans. They call the rising sun. And it's been the ruin 
of many poor girls and me oh god i'm a one my mother was a tailor wow she sold these new blue jeans My sweetheart was a gambler, Lord, down in New Orleans. Powerful, powerful vocals. It's been one of the most impressive parts of listening to this album is Dylan's raw vocals. It has a very haunting quality to his voice that... Uh, maybe doesn't exist in the same way in later versions of Dylan songs, but he definitely Dylanified this track, man. It sounds more folky than the version I heard by the Animals, which had that I think organ part to it, which sort of changed up the vibe of this song. This sounds damn right scary, you know. This is really a sad tale, and I like that he keeps it from the version or the voice of the girl. It's not changed. The lyrics are like still kept in that style look girl and me oh god i'm one now the only thing a gambler needs is a suitcase and a trunk i gotta go back that was too good his voice in that section, man, this, this line here was unreal. Now the only thing wow. a gambler needs is a suitcase and a trunk and the only time he's satisfied is when on a drunk. The performance is incredible. It's like he really lived this. He fills his glasses up to the brim. And he'll pass the cards around. And the only pleasure he gets out of life is rambling from town to town real hypnotic quality to the music on this one very very hypnotic it drags you in drags you in i think the animals version also changed up some of the lyrics and he was told from the point of view of a gambler but it was a male point of view but it's not in this it's more so from the girl who's become a prostitute and describing the scenes around her in the brothel of these different gamblers drinking doing all sorts of different uh activities bad activities hotel my baby sister not to do what i It's one foot on the platform And the other foot on the train I'm going back to New Orleans To wear that ball and chain Really interesting uh, line about the 
the psyche of someone who is kind of selling their body one foot on the platform which can be taken two different ways platform of the train that she's about to take or platform being like where you're sold you know as you would be in one of these brothels and the guilt and the duality of like wanting to run away and staying where she was and then also getting on this train because she knows she wants to go back and be make money perhaps to help her family or i don't know just live out some kind of trauma i'm a going back to new orleans my race is over Unbelievable performance of that track. Wow. Damn. That that got me in a whole different zone, man. Different space, different vibe. Whoa. Um that is how you perform a song, man. You put yourself in the emotions of the story, right? And you really feel like you're there, kind of witnessing this this young lady's life. He told it in such a kind of sincere way as well, like you felt it you felt it that was unreal man that might be the best track on the album so far i mean the writing of the song is obviously amazing that's why so many people did a version of it but his style of delivering it just transformed it to this sad sad tale oh my god depressing but that's what it's supposed to do right music is supposed to affect you like that this it's either this one or man of constant sorrow those are the two best songs on the album so far that was a 10 out of 10 man Dylan at his best. His voice on this is just... It's the way he twists and he contorts his vocals to sound less like he's retching or like he's in pain telling this story. Great stuff, man. Great stuff. Uh, on to the final part of the series. See you then.